Hello Squawks Ed here returning with another instructional video on the K-50 Black Shark Attack Helicopter. In this video we're going to be looking at the rockets, namely the S-8 rockets uh, and the S-13. And uh, I intend to break these videos up into two parts mainly. The first we're going to talk a little bit about the rockets and their launches and find out a bit of information about them before we move on into the cockpit. If you'd like to skip this information by all means skip ahead, jump into the cockpit and I'll go through how to employ them. For those who would like to know a little bit more about these rockets, here we go. So attached to the outboard mounts of this attack helicopter we have the S8 rockets which are housed in their B8V20 Alpha or A launchers and on the inside we have you see the rocket pod there that contains the S13 rockets and the launchers designated as the UB13 or the UB13. So let's talk about the S8 rockets. So in an effort to improve the firepower of ground attack aircraft, the Tokmash Design Bureau, or that could be Toshmash, was commissioned in the late 1960s to develop this 80mm unguided air-to-ground rocket. Their existing 57mm rockets were seen as inadequate and so the S-8 was born. With an increased rate of fire, increased aerodynamic heat resistance and increased range, with a lower minimum launch altitude, the S-8 became an effective weapon to be employed against ground targets and according to the manual of this Black Shark there are over 25 models in production today. This launcher here can house a variety of S-8s. In DCS we have the S-8 Com, so the S-8 Kilo Oscar Mike. That is an 80mm heat or high explosive anti-tank rocket. It has a shaped charge with fragmentation warhead it's propelled by solid propellant motors and uh, can penetrate up to 400 millimeters of armor. Its effective launch range is between 1,300 and 4,000 meters. And it has a speed of 610 meters per second. So that's the S8 Com. After that, um, an upgraded version of the S8 rocket is the S8 OFP2. Now this was uh, upgrade, as I say, an upgraded version. It had a hollow charge, high explosive fragmentation penetrating warhead. It had an improved motor with increased engine time, dual fuses to detonate after penetration and can penetrate armored vehicles and tanks. It has the ability to destroy multiple targets in an open area, in fortifications and in forests. So those are the primary two rockets we have in DCS for this launcher uh, and we can select them within the aircraft. I'll show you how to do that a bit later. The other two types of S8 that uh, are in this simulator are the S8OM, the illumination rockets and they do exactly what they say on the tin. Therefore target illumination and on impact emit 2 million candles of visible light for 35 seconds. You've also got the S8TSM rocket which causes a smoke cloud to mark target positions and in this simulator it's uh, the smoke is in orange. So that's the S8 rockets. Uh, they're launched from this B8V20 Alpha or A launcher um, which is a helicopter variant of the launcher so it has longer tubes and improved heat resistance and each launcher can contain 20 rockets. It has increased engagement range from previous launchers such as the S5 launchers and uh, the rockets can be released in various numbers. We'll go into this in the cockpit but uh, know that these are launched either in singles from each pod at the same time, um, in quarters which is in this case is five rockets from each launcher so 10 in total on the medium setting or on the long setting 10 from each launcher so half of the pod in total which is extreme number of rockets uh, to be launched at once. So that's the S8s. So on the inboard stations you can see a longer rocket pod there that uh, as we mentioned before is the UB13 launcher and each launcher contains the S13 rocket. The S130F rocket is a newer high explosive blast fragmentation rocket which arose from the earlier development in the 1970s of the S13. 
The original S-13 is a very much a bunker busting rocket. However, this S-130F variant was developed for use against lightly armoured vehicles and is more efficient than the S-8s and built on a standard set of modules. So this is a heavier warhead rocket. Um, you've got seven kilograms of explosive, much more than the S-8s, um, which are between, I think, one and two. Uh, on impact, it produces 450 splinters between 25 and 35 grams each, capable of penetrating lightly armored vehicles such as APCs and infantry vehicles. Each S-130F has a range between 1,600 and 3,000 meters and has a maximum speed of 500 and 30 meters a second. As I said, the rockets are deployed from the UB-13 launcher in much the same way as the S-8s are deployed from these um, launchers on the outboard stations. Okay, that's a lot of information there, but um, I'm eager to get in and fire these things, so without further ado, we're going to jump into the cockpit. Welcome to the cockpit of the KA-50. So you can see on the HUD we have a stable hover indicated by the point we've designated beneath us, this square here, and this circle representing our helicopter above it. The hover is being maintained by the autopilot and if you need to know how to get into a hover by all means check out a previous video, I'll link it at the end of this video. So there's two ways we can really deploy these rockets and uh, I would argue the second way that I'm going to show you is the better way to do it, the bore sighted mode. But for completeness we'll show you how we can use the cheval of this aircraft, this TV screen and the cheval mounted on the front of the helicopter to gain the ranging information to the target. And we'll do that first. But before we do anything we need to tell the Black Shark what type of rocket we're using. And to do that, we look over our right shoulder, and you'll see this knob here. You see it there? Okay, so this knob here, this tells the Black Shark what type of rocket we're going to be firing. You'll see there's 10 different selections for unguided munitions. If you hover the mouse over it, you'll see, you probably can't read it on this screen, but uh, it'll tell you the weapons currently selected. So in this case, zero refers to the S8, and we're going to be firing the S8 Kilo Oscar Mikes, or comms, um, in this tutorial, uh, as well as the S13s. And if we move this to the second position, you'll see that the S13s can be selected that way. So for now, we need it on zero. Make sure you select this first before firing any rockets. This will tell the computer the parameters of that munition. Okay. So next, down here you can see the weapon select panel, it's got the master arm here, we'll have this display the, of the, our munitions, that'll uh, light up when we select the rockets. And also another switch we need to be aware of is this short, medium and long switch. Now in short mode the rockets will be deployed singly. And in medium, a quarter of whatever pod we've got selected will be fired per pod, and in long, half of that pod. So in terms of numbers, in short mode, a single will be fired from each pod, so two rockets will be fired for the S8. In medium, a quarter of the pod is five, so uh, five per pod, that means ten rockets will be fired downrange. So one, ten... And on long, half of each pod will be deployed. So that's 10 rockets per pod for a total of 20 rockets. So we have 1, 10, 20 rockets. Right, we'll keep it in short to save on rockets. Next, we, if you look down here, you can see the brightness and TV contrast uh, for the Cheval. Uh, we'll be using that later if we've got any problems uh, identifying or seeing our targets. Near our left knee, we have the laser standby switch, and we'll switch that up when we need it. Uh, be mindful that uh, I believe in the Black Shark 3 that it'll burn out. This laser can burn out if left on, so uh, we'll switch that on when needed. And probably finally, just to mention, before we uh, deploy any weapons, we need this weapon switch on. And as part of the startup tutorial, I switch this on. But uh, if you haven't got this selected, you won't be able to use the weapons. So make sure that weapon system switch is up uh, and uh, ready to be used. Okay, let's get going then. So 
If we uncage the Schwal using the uncage Schwal stroke designate target button, which you'll need bound. Mine's on my cyclic. I'll do that now. Looking up at the HUD, you'll see this circle here indicates where the Schwal is looking. So we can slew the Schwal using slew up, down, left and right. Uh, again, there'll be bindings that you'll need. So coming down to the beach, we've got various different vehicles. Um, let's go over to a vehicle on the right. Here we go. There we are. So once we've identified a target, and we can use the TV brightness and contrast to uh, make the image a little bit cleaner for us. So there we are. What we want to do, we want to put our master arm... Well, we want to select our rockets and then our master arm on. And to select rockets, we need to select the inward or outward stations. And in our case, we'll be using the S8 comms. So we need the outward station selected. And that's another key that needs to be bound. You can see the outward station selected by the green lights on the outer pylons. The indication here is that we're on the outer pylon and uh, the number of rockets remaining. If you see, I switched to the S13, there's 10 rockets there and it's showing the inner pylons. And that's uh, also confirmed on the HUD by changing to inner and outer pylons. Okay. Once we've got that selected, let's get our master arm on. And as soon as we arm, you'll see this C come up and it will also be on the HUD. There we go. That tells us we can deploy the uh, munition. We can fire the rockets. So we have to be really careful now um, that we don't do that until we're absolutely ready. So next, let's turn the laser on. Okay. And we also need to bind the narrow and wide views of the Schwal and also the increase and decrease TV target size um, because that will allow us to zoom in and out and also change the size of this box now do remember this file is only supplying ranging information to the targeted computer it's not um, going to affect the azimuth of the rocket that's done by us so only its ranging information will be provided so let's press the target lock button on the cyclic and you can see there we've got a target lock another thing to note is that we're in automatic tracking mode here we need to keep that on and we can see here by this TA we have a target lock on that vehicle. Looking up at the HUD, now you might remember from the Vickers tutorial that uh, you get some ranging information on the HUD and here we go, it's the same for the rocket, albeit a bit smaller. This circle, these bars, this second and third bar tell us our minimum and our maximum range and the line on the outside of the circle tells us our current range to target so we've got 1.2 kilometers and that's within minimum and maximum range for this rocket and what we need to do and this is where the tricky bit is we need to marry this circle up with that circle which is where the shrall is pointed and to do that we'll have to come out of hover so do bear with me hopefully I won't crash so let's disengage hover mode and also autopilot mode. Okay, and we're going to line up the rocket. Okay, we need to just be careful here. We're 1.2 kilometers away now. We've still got the lock on. Keep coming. We're going sideways actually, but here we go. And that was uh, okay, I missed. But you can see there that roughly that position... Oh, no, I might have caught it. But the um, the rockets are roughly in the ballpark of that. Now, you probably need a better pilot than me, but that's uh, it's quite hard to do, actually, if I'm honest. So there we go. So that's using ranging information from the Schwal. Yeah, it's not on fire, so we hardly touched it. Uh, it's why I don't like using it. It's a quite fiddly thing to do. And the better way, I find, is to use the bore sight. And it's very easy to get to that uh, position. What we do is we hit the reset button down here. You can also have that bound. I do. And all we need to do is select the outboard, outward pylons. And we do that now. And look, up there is the bore sight. 
All we need to really do is point that at the target and fire the rockets and it'll be roughly in that uh, area. It's not as accurate in terms of range of course a bit, uh, as using the Schwal, but I find it's much better to fly towards the target, get that reticule over the target you want to destroy and then release those rockets and we'll try and do that now. Now it's important to note that the deployment of the S-13s is exactly the same way. There's uh, no difference in both, only the number. But the S-13s, of course, have a, a heavier warhead, uh, 7 kilograms, um, which is uh, much more than the S-8, but of course there's fewer of them. So you make your choice. But here we go. We're coming down to the convoy here. And we're going to gently approach this truck and we're going to release the rocket look at that okay 94% damaged uh, it's pretty much destroyed so next what we need to do is look at uh, how we deploy more than two rockets and we can do that again as I say selecting the medium or long we're going to select long on this one so we're going to have some fun we're going to fire 20 rockets when we uh, hold the release button down and conveniently traveling towards us over here is a nice convoy of trucks so let's approach ignore the altitude warning there we go there we go look at that 20 rockets all downrange and devastating effect so if you ever want to release large salvos, hit that on long and uh, fire off your rockets. Right, so that's pretty much it for rockets. Um, as I say, we can change and do uh, deploy some S13s, which I can do by turning this switch to number two, selecting the out uh, sorry inboard stations, which I'll do now, and let's do singles. I believe we've got some armoured APCs down on the beach, which uh, these rockets should make short work of, if we're accurate enough. Okay, let's uh, go down the beach here. But yeah, uh, rockets are pretty easy to deploy, um, and uh, very much like if you're bore sighting the cannon rather than standing off, you do have to get quite close to use them. Uh, but uh, as I say, they are an effective weapon. I might skip the video forward a little bit here just to get on target and you can see me fire these S-13s. Okay, we're approaching our APCs and we're going to fire. In fact, I'm going to press it several times, I think. There we go. We've made short work of a few of them. Right, so I hope this tutorial has helped you um, understand how we deploy rockets and give you a bit of information at the beginning of uh, how those rockets came to be and uh, what they're used for. Hello, Squawks from the cutting floor here. I thought it important to mention, and it's incredible that it's been modelled in this simulator, the impact of firing a lot of uh, missiles all at once and how it can uh, disrupt your engines. The exhaust from these rockets can actually uh, flame out your engines. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. It's best that you're moving when you deploy those rockets. If you are in a hover and you select 20 rockets, so 10 per pod, watch what happens when I fire. So I've got my arm, master arm on, we're ready to fire them. I'm. If you look down here, you'll see we're selected to long and you've got 40 rockets. But as soon as I deploy them, watch what happens. Okay, we've lost our engine. And there we go. So, as a word of warning, don't hover and deploy 20 rockets because it'll flame out your engine. Okay. Anyway, I do uh, hope this uh, tutorial has been of benefit to you and do please click a like and subscribe uh, if you'd like to see more videos and I hope to catch you in the next one uh, and in multiplayer sometime soon. Bye bye for now.